We're going to look at Matthew 13. The 13th chapter of Matthew. Yes, yes, yes. Matthew 13, the 13th chapter of Matthew. Now, we know that Matthew was, was a tax collector. Yeah. And um, Matthew also featured in one of Jesus' parables. He had to preach the, the, the parable of the Pharisee and the sinner. And the Pharisee got up in church and said how great he was. That he fasted, that he tithed, that he gave alms to the poor, that he did so many great things. He said this in the church. And that was his, his worship to God that the Pharisee gave. He reminded the Lord just how good he lived his life. And, and the word of God says that a sinner whom he's identified to be Matthew got up in the synagogue and said, Lord, forgive me a sinner. And Jesus said upon seeing this, he said, he asked the disciples, who was the most justified? Who was the justified? And Jesus said, it was the sinner. So we can talk about how good we are, but we know that our, our righteousness is as filthy rags. And we must never, ever get caught up in, in what we might do. Because this man, the Pharisee, just might have had the wherewithal to do these things and thought that that would make him good. But Matthew understood the truth of the situation that he is a sinner. And we know that Matthew was a tax collector and he... He was a crook because he made sure that he taxed people and got his, his share. Or he'd throw you in jail and, and, and sell your children um, to get his money. That's the kind of man that Matthew was. And he was at the, at, the, at the tax collecting table when Jesus called him. And he became an apostle. So sometimes when we are at our tax table and, and, and we're trying to make a living and sometimes we get so hard in our hearts that we, we want the living no matter what. Sometimes we, we forget to, to give God his, his praise. We forget our own soul when we're, when we're doing what we do. And that's what Matthew realized when he heard the word because Matthew was good ground. And Matthew himself was a parable. But in the book of Matthew, we have a great listing of, of some great parables. And they read as follows. We we'll read the parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl. Jesus says, Matthew 13, verses 44 and 45 and 46. 44, 45, and 46. Matthew chapter 13, 45, 44, and 46. And Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is here still to instruct us, Lord, to refine us, to make us greater, to turn us into pearls of great value, O oh Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you came to earth and found it not robbery to lay your life down for us, O oh Father Lord. You said in your word that greater love has no man for another, that he would lay down his life for his brother. And Lord, you did the same. You didn't just talk about it. In the synagogue, Lord, you did it, oh, Father God. You showed us exactly what we are. You gave us the eternal truth that without you, we are nothing. Lord, we thank you. We love you and we adore you. And in your holy name we say, amen. amen. These are parables, and Jesus taught in parables. Uh, back in, in, in those days, people didn't write. So to impress upon the mind, they gave you these parables. And what parables were is a way of saying one thing to mean another. So Jesus might say, like he says here, the kingdom of heaven is like, um, we call those similes. They, they say it's like because it's similar to. So he's, he's trying to show you what the kingdom of heaven is like. And that's a very hard thing to do because when we're talking about the kingdom of heaven, it's a hard concept to grasp because number one, the kingdom of heaven is a name. And, and Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is as a merchant looking, so it's an action. The kingdom of heaven is an action word, which is a verb. 
So it's hard to understand because these are spiritual concepts and Jesus is trying to impress upon our mind a spiritual concept in, in, in an earthly way. And Jesus is also saying to them with these parables that all the prophets which wish they had heard what he's saying to them then. So what Jesus is saying right now in, in the parables is what all the prophets sought to, sought to see. It's what they really sought to understand. Exactly what was the kingdom of heaven was about. When we talk about the kingdom of heaven, we got to look at the word kingdom. And kingdom means the rule. And, 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 and heaven means the higher place. And, and the thing is that heaven is not a place because heaven can't hold God. And, 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 and his kingdom is not really a place also because God is a spirit and must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. So what, so what Jesus is talking about, he's saying to you the power of God, what God is, what his, what his nature really is. His nature, his nature is as a power of a ruler. And the power of this ruler is like a merchant. He goes about seeking great and valuable things. And the great and valuable things he seeks is us. Jesus is here trying to explain the, the riddle of creation. He's trying to say to us that, 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 that in, in creating God, this didn't create to be because he was bored, but with a purpose in mind. And that purpose in mind was us from the beginning. He speaks about that the, the, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. And he uses the example of fine pearls because in, in those days, the best jewel was pearls. Yes. Because pearls were, pearls were made naturally. When they would find like gems in those days, they, they'd have to polish them. When you find a diamond, it's like a dirty rock. You have, they have to, have to file it off and chop it and cut it and do these things to us and, and refine it. But with a pearl, it was ready to go because it was a natural thing. A pearl is the only biological gem that we have. And he's speaking about us being biological gems. And how you make a pearl is that in those days, today we simulate pearls. And so pearls have lost their value. But in those days, it was a piece of rock or a piece of a sand would get into an oyster. And the oyster, because it was irritated, but would cover the, the, the grain of sand with, 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 with its secretions. And over time, eight to ten years, there'd be a pearl. Some would be tear sharp shaped, some would be round, or some would be, be, be looking like a, a rock. But they were beautiful to behold. And because they were natural, they were, they were the greatest possible gem. And Jesus is is saying to us that we are like pearls, that, that within us is an irritation, it's a sin. And, and that sin, once we're inside of Christ, who he represents as the oyster here, he covers us and he makes us a, a gem, something that is sanctified and made beautiful, and made sanctified and, and beautiful through him, and that is what God seeks. He's not seeking people who think that they're proud in and of their own behavior, in and of their own thinking, in and of their own, their, their own concept, in and of their own race, in and of their own wealth. He, sees, he, he wants people who was an irritant at one time, who was a sin and an impediment to God, but who was covered over through the beauty of Christ and who, who were made beautiful, and that is what God seeks. And, and, and he says that God's love and his desire for us is so great that he would sell all he has just to have one of us. Jesus speaks about how, how, how when a shepherd loses one sheep, that he would leave the rest and go out and find the one. Yes. And he speaks about how when a prodigal son goes out and comes back in, there is rejoicing in, in heaven. So valuable we are. But we have to understand even deeper than this. This, this, this great pearl, his journey towards the great pearl began with, with, with Adam and Eve. And, and, and the thing with Adam and Eve because this is when love is first portrayed. It's a very fascinating thing because, because the pearl for Adam was Eve. When, when, when Adam had everything he had, he, he had dominion of the world. He was the gardener. He named all the animals. He was in charge. He walked with God every day. But it wasn't until he saw Eve that, that, he, that he gave up everything he had for Eve. You see, Adam knew in a sense that he'd have to lay it on the line for Eve because Adam said when he saw he says, for this reason shall a man leave his mother and father and join together and become one. Adam's father and mother was, was, was God. He had no father and mother, so it was God. So, so he knew that, 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 he, that, that he 
was going to give everything he had because he had found his great pearl. Adam understood that, 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 that by, by loving this way, it might cause his death. Adam, Adam was, a, was a brilliant man. He understood what the situation was, and he prophesied. He prophesied greatly because he prophesied what would happen quickly and what would happen in, in Revelation. Because, see, Eve represents the church. And, and, and she was the bride, and, and Adam is, and, and um, Jesus is called the, the second Adam. So the first Adam sees his church, and he sees her, and, and he says, this is what it's all about. And when Jesus uses those parables, this is what it's all about. It's all about love. It's all about God laying everything on the line for us. So that when Adam and Eve saw the serpent and, and ate of the fruit, Adam said not a mumbling word, because Adam knew his role, that, that he had found the great pearl of great price, and that pearl of great price was Eve, and when Eve ate of the fruit, the Bible says that she gave to Adam who was there with her, and he took it, and they call that the fall of man. He gave his life for her. He knew that he would be leaving God, and, 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 and he, would be, he would take death in and of himself just to show love for Eve. And, 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 and that is, that is like Adam's calling, and, and you may say, he is a fool, because if she's going to kill herself and, and eat that, 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 that fruit, she's going to eat it by himself. But Adam had given his word. He said, for this reason, I should leave my, my mother and father, and the two shall cleave together and, and become one. See, because God is trying to show us also that, that if we're going to walk with God properly, we have to be prepared to leave mother and father, to leave it all, to lay it on the line, and, and love God, even if it calls us to, to, to lose our lives. And that is something that the apostles didn't want to do at first. They don't want to lose our lives. We don't want to lose anything. We don't want to lose our friends. We don't want to even lose, listen out on our TV shows. We don't want to lose nothing. But, but this is the way it's supposed to be. And Adam, we might criticize him, but Adam showed the way, the way that Jesus would, because Jesus did the same thing. Jesus knew that we would be nothing but trouble. He knew that he had to die upon the cross. He knew that death awaited him. But, but he went upon the, on the cross. They said, cursed is the man is he who hangs upon a tree. And he took that curse upon us and he, he, he died. He watched us eat the fruit of death and, and he ate the fruit of death with, with us. He left it all and he went to hell and death and conquered it. And, and, and that's when he, he rose again to become great. And that's the irritant that became the pearl that, that, that Jesus and, and the Lord is after now. Some people say that that, 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 act that Eve called the, caused the fall of man. We, we, we refer to that time in the Bible as the fall of man. Maybe not so. I call that time the rise of the church. Because had not Eve and Adam eaten that fruit, there would have been no, no need for, for, for Jesus. There would have been no need for the church, and, and there would have been no need for all these things because, because see, the enemy meant it for bad. The enemy, just like in Job, felt like, watch this, God, if you were given the fruit, they will curse you to your face. But God had a plan, and when Job said, I know my Redeemer lives, things changed for, for him. When Jonah went down into the whale, and he said, salvation is of the Lord, he was out of the whale. And it's the same way God, the, the enemy was trying to trick Adam and Eve to, 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 to kill them, to cause separation between them and God. But, 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 but God was using the evil of, of, of the enemy to build his church because the church is the bride of Christ, which Eve, Eve represented. So that Eve, in, in many ways, is, is not some, some trifling woman, but she, she, she carried it within her. And God showed us that, that she had within her the seed that would bruise the head of the serpent. It was not Adam, but it was Eve who carried the church. And after they, they, the fall of man, we don't hear from Adam anymore. All we hear is Eve. And Eve says, she, she conceives, she says, I have a man from the Lord. She gets her son Cain. She gets her son Abel. And, 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 and then we don't hear from them anymore. But we are not to think that, that at one time that, that, that Eve was bad. That is to say that, 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 that um, Job had no faith or that David was no good. Because we're all flawed people just like she was. But we must understand that this is all part of God's plan. God is love. 
So yes. Christ is showing us just what love is, and and and, and love is suffering. I'm sorry. L love is putting it on the line, and, and love is saying, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, I am with you. He said that if you go down to the depths of hell, I am there with you. And 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 and, and some say that it should not be that, but those are people who who want grapes without sowing. Those are people who um who want riches without working. And God is saying is saying is saying that there's nothing can stop the love that I have for you. It don't have to look right or even make any sense to us right now because we only see it through the glass darkly. But God is showing us that he considers us to be a pearl of great price. The Bible says in John 3.16 that for God so love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have life Everlasting, and that's yes. and that's the secret of that's the secret of Genesis. We think that it's all bad because Adam and Eve ate the fruit. No, God had in His plan to show us the height, the depth, and the breadth of love. If we just had a, an easy, easy, blissful life, just skipping along, la di da, how are we gonna know that love that God would love us? There's no trouble. He can't save us, but God is showing that even though the enemy is is, is coming on strong, and even though we might fall and we might fail, He's saying, yeah. don't even and worry about a thing. He is saying that even if you're screwed up, he is saying that 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 you to me are a pearl of great price. He showed this example with Abraham and Isaac, and and, and Abraham finally got it right and became a pearl of great price. And God said, "Kill Isaac," and 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 and, and he went to kill Isaac. But God said, "There's a ram in the bush." And this is the same thing he said to Eve: "The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent." And that ram in the bush, that seed we know is Jesus. And 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 and, and, and that thing that she had, that and everything that seed is that which became a pearl of great price. And Jesus said, "These are the things that every prophet wanted to hear, that we hear in, in, in our hearing, hearing right now, that God is after us, and God seeks us, and and God says that there's no boundaries on His love, and it don't make sense to us sometimes because we think love." Is a, it's, it's a happy thing. There's a song that says, love is a hurting thing. And it is. Be, be, because how are you going to know someone? Is they going to love you when there's good times? Do you really have love? What about when, when, when your money's gone? What about when your health is gone? What about when your beauty is gone? But God loves us even though we, 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 we did wrong. Even though our beauty was gone. But he said he will cover us. He will cover us this way. And Jesus taught them the secrets the secrets of creation. There's another secret that he's teaching us here because just as he used Adam to create Eve, God is showing how he, he created that, 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 that in creating, it wasn't what we think just his word because when we look at Genesis 1-1 in Hebrew, the word create is bara, and bara means to cut out or to cut down. So God in cutting out and God in cutting down cause the heaven and earth to be. So, and, and God in, in, in cutting out of, of Adam caused Eve to be. And, and this is what it's all about. He's saying that it was not just something, it was with a great price that, that, that he gave all that he gave. And, and, and he did all this to show his love for us. Yes. That's why Jesus said in this parable, the kingdom of heaven, and we, we should replace kingdom of heaven for love. And he's saying that love is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. And when he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. And how did he buy us? He bought us with his blood. And we were ransomed at a great price. And, and the enemy think that he had us. He had us from the beginning because he's been fighting the, the Lord since day one. He's been fighting. He took one third of the angels and he thought that he was going to just defeat us. But he is being used to show us just yes. how great his love is. And when Adam says, and the two shall cleave together and become one, Adam is talking about revelation because in revelation, when he when, when, when Jesus comes and raptures the souls and the spirit, that's when he is rapturing the pearls of great price, which he had already gave everything he had for. And everything he had for us is what he cut out of the side and created. He gave the whole world just to have time with us because we are going to be like great pearls. We're going to be 
found in Jesus. We can even say Jesus' love is like an oyster and it covers our sins. It covers our failures. It covers our ugliness. And this is what Jesus is after. That's why David was a man after God's own heart. He was a killer. He was a murderer. He was no good. He was an adulterer. But, but, but it was because of his worship and because of his obedience. And the thing that covers us is, 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 is also the love for God. Our obedience to his word. That's why it says rebellion is rebellion is as witchcraft. So when we when we are obedient to the Lord, when we worship the Lord, we cover ourselves in that shiny, pearly substance, which is called sanctification. And that's all he's looking for. He's not looking for people who are great. He's not looking for people who are mighty, people who, who always pay the tithe. He's not looking for people who always rock steady. He's not looking for people who look like they're so holy. He's looking for people like Matthew was in this book who said, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. And once you understand that you're an irritant to the Lord and, and you need him, then you become become current. Then you become a small yeah. pearl. Then you become yes. a big pearl. Then you become a, a pearl of great price. Yeah. Then you become something that is worthy of the sacrifice of Jesus. And when yeah. Jesus is talking yeah. to us in parables, he's trying to tell us what the kingdom of God is like. And he tells us further in this entire chapter what the kingdom of God is like. First he said, the kingdom of God is as a sower sowing seed. Yes. Hallelujah. And he said the kingdom of, of God is like, is like a man who had a field and he planted seeds and, and the enemy came and planted weeds and tares. He said furthermore, the, the, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that's yes. planted and grows large and it's like yeast with, um, with, within dough that, that increases and the kingdom of heaven is, is like when the weed, when, when, the, when judgment comes, the weeds and the tares are pulled up but separated and it's hidden treasure and it's pearls and the Kingdom of heaven is like a net that's cast and, 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 and pulled in both good and bad. And, and he said, furthermore, a prophet has no honor in his neighborhood. Because you understand, the kingdom of heaven knows which is which. God knows who are his. And, and that's why that, that's why the kingdom of heaven is a soul, because he's sowing into the hearts of those who can, who can accept him. That's why the, the, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, because he is, he is, he's given to everyone a chance to, to, to come forth. The kingdom of heaven is like a, a field of weeds, because there are things within us and things that are in his kingdom which ought not be there. And the kingdom is as a net because he is going to cast his net far and wide giving us all a chance but to do this the kingdom of heaven is first about love and the kingdom of heaven is, is finally discerning and understanding see God is not mocked sometimes we think because we can walk a certain way talk a certain way preach a certain way look a certain way that 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 it is it but how do we know whether or not we're a great pearl Jesus said right here a prophet without honor cannot be in his home hometown. It's not recognized. And he says, furthermore, he can do anything, no miracles in these places in which people did not believe. So how do we know w w whether or not we are among the, the call? Yes. It, it, it's when we are, we are good ground and, and when we're not weeds and, and, and when we have covered ourselves in that pearly material, which is sanctification. And when we are caught up in the net at time of judgment, we, 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 we are good fish, oh Lord, and we understand that, that, that even though we be a treasure hidden, yeah. even though we might find ourselves not shining forth now, we might be within an oyster right now, bottom of the sea, oh God. God is saying that, 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 that my sheep know my voice, and that's, yes. why he, that's, why, that's why he's saying these things to us, that the kingdom of heaven is not a dumb idol. The kingdom of heaven is not a thing that is static. The kingdom of heaven is a thing on the move. It is like a merchant buying and selling, giving everything he has for us, and he did and he will and he will never stop giving us everything that we need the word of God says seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be what added unto you and why do we worry because if this is a God who can look high who can who can create everything out of himself and give his word and then give his son and then, and then give us Adam and give us Eve and so even though that they fell that, that he would bless them anyway and even though they didn't know what to do afterward he clothed them oh father God even though they, they, their kids died oh father God even though they, they, they had so many children and got to act to Abraham oh father God and Abraham made his mistake with Ishmael and Hagar oh father God even though Jacob was no good and Isaac almost lost his life, even though they went into slavery for 400 years and came out and was still wicked for 40 years, 
Even though, Lord, that, that they worship idols in the promised land, God, slain, slain pigs on the altar, oh, Father God. Even though they killed every prophet that, that you sent to them, oh, Father God. Even though that they killed even Christ and we, we slay him every day. Even though we, they threw him in, in a cave, oh, Father God, and they killed every, every apostle since, um, except one. Even though all these things have been done since the fall of man, as we call it, God is still on the throne, and it's still his kingdom, and he's still seeking us, he's still knowing and covering us, he still knows who is who and what is what, and he is coming just like Adam says, that, yeah. that, that for this reason, we are laid on the line too, we got to leave those things that, that bind and easy beset us, and, and, and raise towards the mark. Yes. Adam said, leave mother and father behind. Leave those things that are closest to you that want to hold you back. And, and he says that the two shall cleave together and become one. We got to cleave to Christ and become one. Cleaving to Christ means obedience. Cleaving into Christ, of course, means worship, but it means we, we can worship in church right now, but yet not be obedient. Let me tell you, that's the thing right there. We can just be obedient. Just we can follow his word. We become pearls of great price. And that's what we want to do because the end will come. Yes. And when the end comes, we, we don't want to be like the, the, those foolish virgins. We don't want to be like, like those unprofitable servants. We want to be ready to shine forth, oh, Father God. And that's how we are going to be in Jesus' name. And I'm done. But Lord, we just thank you that your word is strong for us. We thank you that your word is mighty. We, we, we thank you, Lord, that you found us to be pearls of great value, oh, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we, that, that we understand that to be this way, we must be obedient, oh, Father God. We must... We must be in submission to you. Perfect submission. All is at rest. Me and my Savior are happy and blessed. Because the two shall cleave together and become one. In obedience. In perfect submission, Lord. We thank you that you are holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. And we understand, oh Father God. It is not in and of ourselves, but it is you. And we thank you for this word. We thank you that you are here with us. That we are going to be obedient, oh Father God. We are going to walk right. We are going to talk right. We are going to first of all, think right, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We love you and we adore you. We magnify you. And your holy name we say, Amen. 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 Amen.